Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. As you probably guessed from the video's title, we're going to be discussing AMD's Warhol processors, aka Zen 3 Refresh, along with Zen 4. I've actually got a lot more information for AMD's processors for Zen 5 and a few other things, but I'll be tackling that in a separate video because quite frankly, we'll already be going through a lot of stuff here. And let's begin with Warhol. So the refresh of Zen 3 is allegedly going to be on the 6NM processor, that's what I'm hearing. And skew-wise, it's very similar in terms of core and thread count to what we already have with the Ryzen 5000 series. For example, the 5950X with 16 core 32 threads will become uh, the 6950X and so on and so on. That's assuming AMD d does keep the naming schemes intact, but quite frankly, they work. I don't think AMD will change anything, although of course they might do. As for performance, well, yeah, it's often been said that Warhol's, you know, performance is not going to be as impressive as a jump as, let's say, from Zen 2 to Zen 3, but it's probably going to be better than what we saw with Zen to Zen uh, Plus. Zen Plus was very modest. It was a small clock frequency bump, which definitely helped, and slight improvements to cache and so on. So IPC-wise, it was around 3%, and then, of course, you added on the clock frequency on top of that. Warhol is definitely better. I'm hearing in worst case scenarios, applications which don't necessarily leverage Warhol strengths, it's going to be around three to 5%, but it's going to probably top out around 12, 13%. But those are going to be applications which are few and far in between. And I would probably say that around 9% is more likely, but you're going to see the processor more realistically hit nine, uh, sorry, nine gigahertz, five gigahertz more frequently, particularly if you're willing to do tweaking and overclocking. But from what I'm understanding, AMD doesn't seem to be ready to release a five gigahertz SKU. Things can, of course, change, and it is on the 6NM process. But again, Warhol is a decent improvement over what we've already got. And for example, this pure example, if you have a 5600X and you're suddenly starting to do a bit more streaming or you just feel like you needed a bit of additional performance, then it might be worth considering the jump to the newer generation. But that's of course, depending on what's happening with the motherboards and so on. I'm hearing it is going to still be AM4 based with um, DDR5 coming in with Zen 4, which we'll get into in just a second. But, you know, at the end of the day, all of this stuff is leaked, so it is possible that my information is incorrect. I would personally say that Warhol is going to be of more interest to someone who just wants, you know, a new setup. If you've got like a really good, you know, decent clocked 5950X for sake of argument, you might just want to wait for DDR5, you know, the new chips to come out. As for how well this competes to Alder Lake, well, that's the $64,000 question. It does seem to be a case of Warhol taking the, you know, kind of content creator crown. So people who want a processor for Blender, uh, Unreal Engine, you know, those type of obvious applications are probably going to do better with Zen. As for gaming, it's probably going to be really close. This is according to multiple sources. It really does come down from what I am hearing now from two different people to how well Intel can execute Alder Lake on the 10NM process. Basically, how high can they crank it up? We've already discussed a couple of times uh, with, I think it was Raichu on Twitter, was saying that we're hearing a 25% IPC gain with uh, with Alder Lake, but the you know clock frequency reg uh, could regress a little bit, which could mean that we're only seeing a 20% bump. So obviously, if that's the case, it could be a lot tighter with Zen, a uh, free refresh, and what speeds AMD eventually does decide to kind of push the processor. But now let's move to perhaps, in my opinion anyway, the much more exciting CPU, and that is Zen 4. And Zen 4 is going to be quite ridiculous, my friends. It's going to be really a big deal for a couple of reasons. So it is going to be on the 5NM processor, this as a process, I keep saying processor, 5NM processor, and this has been, of course, well established, including by AMD themselves. But it does seem that core and thread count is going to remain pretty much identical to what we're seeing now. So AMD doesn't seem too inclined to increase the core count for mainstream. But this is where things get a little bit spicier. IPC is going to increase significantly with Zen uh, 4, even over what we saw with Zen 2 to Zen 3. 
So performance from Zen 2 to Zen 4 is looking to be quite impressive indeed. And this is thanks to a couple of different factors. So I'm hearing on average, we're going to be seeing an increase of around 40 to 45-ish percent performance. Again, I wanna stress, this is from Zen 2 to Zen 4. And this is from a couple of different factors. The first is DDR5 memory. The second is a new process node. And obviously we also see architectural improvements as well, such as better cache, better branch prediction, whatever else. If that is accurate and we're seeing a 45% increase from Zen 2 to Zen 4, that is quite frankly ridiculous as I'm sure most of you would agree. I, yeah, at that point would say that Intel are going to be under an immense amount of pressure. The good news is for Intel though, that their 7NM processors do seem to be pretty decent and I think that Intel are probably going to do much better with Lunar Lake and beyond. Um, the problem is with Intel though, Raphael, which again are the Ryzen 7000 series, assuming that's what AMD do call these, but Zen 3 refresh seems like it's going to be Ryzen 6000, so presumably Raphael is going to be Ryzen 7000. So Ryzen 7000 obviously is going to absolutely decimate Intel's Alder Lake processors and probably even Raptor Lake won't be enough necessarily to beat Raphael, depending again what Intel can crank out of the clock frequencies of their processor. The problem is Zen 4 as well as Zen 5 are pretty damn big deals. And I think that you know, from everything I'm told now from multiple different people, it's going to be a bumpier ride for Intel for the next couple of generations. So Alder Lake, you can make good arguments for purchasing depending on what your use case scenario is. I think it's quite well established that it's gonna do quite well in games, but the big slash small architecture, honestly, no one's 100% certain how it's gonna shape, you know, it's gonna shake up. I'm hearing the IPC of those cores is not awful despite some people, you know, kind of acting like they couldn't run, uh, I don't know, like, you know, calculator or something like that. They couldn't run uh, Pong from the 70s. They're not that bad, but the IPC is not awful. Um, I'm hearing it might even be slightly better than Skylake for IPC. The problem is that the clock frequency doesn't seem to be super high. We'll have to wait, of course, until final silicon. All of this information could be incorrect, and I do stress you take it with a grain of salt. But my gut feeling is that AMD are just going to have the multi-thread advantage and they're going to continue to press that. But if you only do gaming, if you care mostly about minimum frame rates and stuff like CSGO or COD or whatever, and I don't think, let's face it, you're going to see more than eight core 16 threads required for gaming anytime soon, then there's a pretty good chance that you might stick with Intel. But yeah, Zen 4 is going to be really good as well and it might keep Intel, you know, just at bay. However, future architectures like Zen 5 and Intel's later processors, which are on 7nm, this could be an entirely different ball game. And I suspect Intel are going to be in a much more favorable position. I also want to throw in a bit of bonus information. So uh, in my last RDNA video, I mentioned that uh, there's a possibility that the MLA patent, the chiplet patent that uh, we've discussed multiple times on the channel. I did a full analysis of it. As a quick reminder, if you missed that video, basically NVIDIA's tensor cores, but in a chiplet form and for AMD, it basically handles very similar math. So for RDNA 3, uh, machine learning is still handled much the same way as RDNA 2. The difference is though, that um, RDNA 4 basically takes this in a chiplet form and it does seem to be that RDNA 4 does have those MLA chiplets. Uh, this is what another source has told me on top of the other two. Um, they are not regular sources other than one, however, that's told me this. I generally like to have two regular sources tell me something uh, for me to be more confident in it. But since three now have pretty much hinted the same thing and one's told me outright, I'm fairly confident that this could be true. Um, I, I would not, however, and this is slightly off topic, I would not be exactly amazed. I would not be like, oh my God, what is happening? Cats and dogs are playing together and the world is suddenly filled with rainbows and lollipops. No, I, I would not be surprised at all if we also saw a variant of this patent for CDNA3. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be for CDNA2. I'm hearing CDNA2 could even be monolithic, although I'm not hearing that confirmed. So I would take that again with a grain of salt. 
but uh, I think that cDNA2 is probably going to be monolithic. I think cDNA3 is going to be chiplet based and I would not be surprised if there are MLA accelerators on cDNA3 or 4. Whether they're going to be you know better than the ones we have in rDNA, whether for example they're going to have more cores for lack of a better term, I don't 100% know. But yeah, RDNA 3 and 4 are going to be really good. I have actually got more info on those and I'll probably throw it into the next uh, Zen video um, as I'm trying to kind of catch up with the thing. The next uh, kind of big thing I want to put out, however, is going to be Sony and Epic Games because, you know, there's a lot of discussion about that. So I do want to discuss kind of my thoughts on that because it's... At least in my opinion and from what I'm hearing, I don't think this is just going to be kind of game related and, uh, you know, we've already heard Epic themselves discuss a lot about the metaverse, but that's again a topic for another video. With all of that said, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you did, well, you know what to do. You roll across the floor and then you click the like button. I don't know where that came from. That was awful. But anyway, if you click the like button, that'd be great. And you can subscribe to the channel as well. And maybe after you've done the rolling, they can do like a second roll. Yeah, I'm in a really weird mood, if you can't tell. Anyway, I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.